Welcome back to Power Lunch. Democrats kicking off their four-day convention in Chicago today that they hope will boost Vice President Kamala Harris's chances for the White House in November. This event comes less than a month since she rose to the top of its ticket, replacing President Joe Biden. He is scheduled to deliver the keynote address tonight, passing on the torch to Harris. Other top Democrats, like former President Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, are expected to speak throughout the week. Joining us now for more on what to watch is Ed Mills, Washington policy analyst at Raymond James. Ed, it's nice to see you. Great to be here, Seema. What do you envision Harris's message to be on the economy? Uh, what will she lead with? And will she find opportunities to break from President Biden on certain policies? Yeah, Seema, it's really been interesting because since the start of her ascension to the top of the ticket, uh, we have not gotten a lot of detail. We got some detail uh, last Friday uh, with her economic plan. I think generally speaking, the expectation is she's going to embrace most of what has been the Biden-Harris uh, administration. But we're going to get some tweaks. We're going to get some breaks. Uh, we'll get that on Thursday when she addresses this crowd. Uh, but we haven't had a sit-down interview. We haven't really gotten a chance. And I think when I talk to investors here at Raymond James, they want to know what her policies will be. And most of what I'm able to say is, Look at what has been the policies of the Biden administration, because most of that will continue. But that's not across the board here. I think one policy, or at least the mention of it, that has been getting some attention is price gouging, taking aim at groceries and uh, grocers. Excuse me. You know what that could actually look like? Is that govern the government actually price fixing, implementing price controls? How do you think she navigates that topic? Yes, you know, I, I kind of view this as uh, taking the mantle of Biden's shrinkflation campaign and talking about additional powers. I also kind of look at this from the perspective of, in politics, when you're explaining, you're losing. So Democrats do know that under the Biden-Harris administration, there's been a lot of inflation. She doesn't necessarily want to be on the defense in terms of explaining uh, what the administration has done that could have contributed to inflation. She wants to be able to pivot and say, look, this is how I would deal with this slightly differently. I think a lot of this is about empowering the FTC, which is led by Lena Khan, who's been extremely uh, aggressive, to not price fix, but look at where there might be you know, some gouging, uh, looking at the middleman. We've seen this over the last several years, kind of that, that making the middleman the boogeyman uh, moving forward. But from a market perspective, what I would look at is, are there some middlemen that have outsized profit margins? That could get a lot of government scrutiny. Or are there certain deals that if they were to come together, could give them even more market power. And so last week we had Mars Kelanova. Are other deals out there uh, maybe pausing, not going to sign that deal? Or are those deals that have been announced going to have additional scrutiny? From a market perspective, Seema, that's, that's how I really look at uh, those economic plans. Ed, check me here in my impression. My impression here is that it's not necessarily the economic policies of the Biden-Harris administration across the board that are unpopular. It's Biden that's been <laughs> kind of unpopular. And inflation, of course, is unpopular. So to what degree do you expect Vice President Harris to present herself as a change candidate, even as we're seeing, you know, the golden oldies of, of Biden, both Clintons and Obama uh, up, uh, kind of gearing the crowd up for her? Yeah, John, I think it's important. What you highlight is that every election is a choice. It's compared to what? And I think that something that was a drag on the ticket was the fact that um, when we look at the right track, wrong track numbers by voters, they mostly say about 65, 70 percent of Americans say this country's on the wrong track. And so when you're the incumbent president, it's very difficult to win re-election. Changing out the candidates changes that a little bit. But I think what Harris has really going for her is that the comparison that voters are being asked to make is, do you want a Harris presidency or a Trump presidency? And Donald Trump, when we look at favorable, unfavorable ratings, he's underwater. And what has happened uh, over the last month is Harris started out as vice president underwater in those favorable versus unfavorable. And she now has a net favorable rating. When you have a favorable view of a candidate, you're more likely to vote for him or her. Mm. And so that favorability rating, I think, is really what we are watching uh, here at Raymond James in terms of seeing who has the edge going into November. Let me try to widen the aperture here. We've been talking a lot about domestic policy when it comes to the economy. What about the international? What about globalism and potentially tariffs, particularly China? What have we heard 
from the vice president? And what more do you think we need to hear? We haven't heard all that much, and that's kind of what I started out with. I do expect that the U.S.-China relationship to be front and center, regardless of who's in the White House. How that gets dealt with is going to be very different. Uh, former President Trump has argued that he would like to have a 60 percent tariff on certain goods that are coming, or all goods coming from uh, China, and 10 percent tariffs elsewhere. I get a lot of questions on whether or not that would be a second wave of inflation. Is that going to be something that impacts the consumer? Uh, there's not an expectation that there would be uh, tariffs on goods if Harris and Walls are elected. But we've also had a lot of conversations here at Raymond James about the tech exports uh, that have been restricted by the Biden administration that absolutely would continue. The true one bipartisan issue here in Washington, D.C. is getting tough on China. That does not change. But from a geopolitical perspective, something that really was a drag on Biden, and it could still be a drag on Harris, is the kind of geopolitical issues that have risen during his term that has fed into that wrong track. And so if it was someone other than Trump, I do think that there would be a h even higher poll numbers for the challenger because inflation, the border and geopolitical issues are issues that are favoring the uh, party that's not in control and something that Harris is going to ultimately have to answer for how she would deal with this differently if she were to be elected.